Good morning, Pastor Connor here. It's 7.30 on July 13th. Thanks for being with me. If you're joining me live, great. I'm so glad you're here. If it's a different time during the day or a different day, doesn't matter. I'm just glad you're able to be with us and be a part of uh, the conversation and a part of our prayer time together. So thanks for joining me. So today uh, we're going to be, well, let me get my prayer chain out here. So if you've got this guy with you, you can use it. Otherwise, you don't have to have this to participate. It's all posted on our website. So just in case you're joining us for the first time, this is our second week now, day number six of our 15 days of prayer. We'll do this Monday through Friday this week yet and next week also. So if you want to be a part of this in terms of knowing what's coming up, uh, you can look on our website, zionmanning.com. At the bottom, it'll have these all posted. If you do want a copy of these guys, they're still available here at Zion. They're at the Manning, uh, the, the vet clinic here in Manning. They are at the marketplace and also the library. You can pick up an envelope with these guys in it and still participate. So let me go ahead and get today's ripped off for us and hold it up for you. Okay, so on day number six, we're praying for your pastor or pastors uh, and for church workers and missionaries. Uh, Paul writes, uh, well, Luke writes this, but recording Paul's words in Acts chapter 20, Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. The word there is episkopos, from which we get the word bishop or pastor, to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood, Acts 20, 28. Okay, so we're going to talk about pastors, church workers, and missionaries. And I want to start with missionaries, because all Christians are missionaries. If you're a Christian, you're a missionary. So that means that all Christians are called to join Jesus on his mission to bring his kingdom into the world. All Christians are eager to tell people about the new life that is ours in Jesus, that God is rescuing the world in Jesus, that he is making all things new through baptism and through his word. So all of us are missionaries who get to tell this good news of Jesus. And that's really exciting. Most of us are local or everyday missionaries. So we are missionaries where we live. Sometimes God sends missionaries far away to tell people about Jesus. So if you remember our spices from last week, I was visiting with some of you uh, earlier uh, in last week and you reflected upon how the spices also reminded you of the different people groups around the world. And I think that's really exciting. So imagine where those spices are from and you imagine where the people who are there and, and God sends sometimes missionaries to go far away to tell people about Jesus. Um, and, and one of the really cool things about uh, the church is that we get to support these missionaries. That, that's really exciting because not all of us can go far away, so we give generously so that some of us can. At Zion, we support several different missionaries, some who are local here in Iowa, some who are on the other side of the world. Uh, actually, our kids, uh, if, you're, if you're kids, if you're watching at some point in, for, the, for the video, this series, uh, you support missionaries way down here in Uruguay. You have missionaries, the Sharp family, in Uruguay. And that's really, really cool to know that we have missionaries on the southern part of the world. We also have missionaries here that we support in Taiwan, a couple different ones in Taiwan, as they bring Jesus to that region of the world. So very exciting that we get to, to support missionaries, the, the, the ones who go far away. But remember, we are all missionaries, even in our local contexts. Okay, church workers. So this would be uh, Christian uh, um, teachers in our Christian schools, our DCEs, which stand for Director of Christian Outreach, or, sorry, Direct, Director of Christian Education. I said that wrong. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the daughters of Zion, Rhonda Moore, she is a DCE and she serves at our district office and she works with a lot of different people to tell them about Jesus. She has a really exciting calling from the Lord where she serves. So a DCE is a Director of Christian Education and she serves with our, our district. There are DCOs, Director of Christian Outreach. There are deaconess, deaconesses like Deaconess Tiffany, uh, Pastor Johnson's wife over at Trinity in Manila, who do some really amazing ministry work, sharing people, the love of Jesus with people. And these are all very important positions and workers in God's church. They all assist 
the office of pastor. So the office of pastor is a specific office established by God in his church. Now, I don't want you to think of this office as a room, but as a station or as a specific funnel. So remember our funnel here, right? Vocation, funnel. Office of pastor is a specific funnel created by God to funnel his love to his church. So God calls or chooses a man through his church to dedicate his whole life to teaching the word of God and to giving the sacraments of God to a gathered group of people we call the church or a local congregation. And the Bible refers to these pastors as shepherds who care for God's sheep. So pastors stand in the place of Jesus to speak the word of Jesus, the Bible, to his church. So this is essential. This, this, uh, let's do it this way. This is the book that pastors use. They preach, when we talk about preaching the word, we're talking about this, not something we're making up up here. We're talking about what comes out of scripture and that's absolutely essential. Okay, and just like with missionaries, pastors can be sent anywhere in the world. I was sent here to Iowa, and I'm excited to be here. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uniform that pastors wear. So you see the shirt I'm wearing? It's a standard uniform for pastors. Not all pastors wear it, but it's pretty typical for pastors to wear this sort of shirt, which identifies us as a pastor. Just how a police officer has a certain uniform that he wears, that identifies him, him or her as a police officer or the postal worker as a certain uniform that he or she wears to identify them as a postal worker. This is the uniform that I wear. So you say, that guy is a pastor. Okay, but beyond that, you also see uh, when we do worship, we also put on additional pieces of clothing to identify us. You see that white robe hanging back there? That's called an alb, A-L-B. It's from the Latin word alba, and guess what it means? white. Yeah, pretty creative, right? But anyway, the white robe is designed to cover the man. It's meant to de-emphasize the man. Even though I know sometimes it seems like we're making it seem like he's really important because he's wearing this white robe, the actual intent is to cover the man so that he is de-emphasized so that Christ is emphasized. So that white robe symbolizes baptism, that we are covered in the righteousness of Christ. Uh, it de-emphasizes the man, so it plays down the man. But it also reminds us that this man is standing in a specific office called by the church to do a specific job. And pastors also wear a stole. So you'll see me wear a stole. And let me see if I can get this to work for us here. So this, this would be one uh, image on one of the stoles I wear. Now you see the boat there. Jesus often preached from a boat and thereby made the boat his pulpit. But you also see the net. Jesus talked about making us fishers of men. So you see that image here. And you also see the water. No accident that there are three strips of water for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But again, the, the main image here is the mission emphasis of the pastoral office that he has made pastors and really all missionaries, but fishers of men. Now, the other image on the other side of this stole, this is important. This is what a pastor does. You see the cross in the middle. So Jesus at the center of all of it. You can see here, this is the chalice and the wafer. This is Holy Communion. And over here, you can see the shell and the water. And that would symbolize, well, baptism, right? You see the three drops of water for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So this is telling you what this pastor does. Now, this stole is also symbolic because the pastor puts it around his neck. And it's meant to symbolize the burden that the pastor is called to share, to bear with his people. He is to bear their burdens with and for them, just as Christ. Now, we don't die a sacrificial death in the sense of atoning for sins, but since we're standing in the stead or the place of Jesus, we're called to be like Jesus in that what we're called to bear on behalf of the gathered people around us, okay? But it's all designed to point us to Jesus. But that stole is only worn by pastors. So when a pastor is ordained or approved by the church to be a pastor, 
They put the stole on him, and this is the joyful burden that the pastor is called to bear on behalf of his people. Now, one more item. Pastors often wear a cross. The fancy name is pectoral cross. It's just because it's a bigger cross that hangs across your chest. This is the one I wear, and I absolutely love this cross. Right, The I-N-R-I at the top there, Jesus Christ, King of the Jews, is what it stands for in Latin. But if I can get you, if I didn't get too blurry there, you can see, I just think it's a, it's a beautiful depiction of Christ on the cross. And you say, why do we always have to have Jesus on the cross? Well, yes, Jesus has been raised from the dead, and we celebrate that as the center of our faith. But Paul says in 1 Corinthians that we preach Christ crucified. It's a long story, but it's the perfect tense, tense in Greek, and it means a past event with ongoing significance. So that preaching of Christ crucified is at the center of who we are, that Jesus Christ, that this man, he died for us. He died for us. Us. Yeah, and you consider who we are, sinners that we are. He died for us. He died for our sins and rose for our life. This is who we are about. This is who we preach. This is the center of everything that we do. And this is why pastors oftentimes will wear one of these crosses to help remind us of this. Now, I love being a pastor. I love telling people about Jesus and his promises to raise our bodies and renew the earth, about the promise that, that, that we and, and all believers from all over the world, right? Think of all the flavors of the spices that we share, that they represent all the different people groups from all over the world. That we are all going to be with Jesus on this earth, which he makes new forever. That's really exciting. I know Pastor Johnson loves being a pastor, and Deaconess Tiffany loves being a deaconess, and Ron Moore loves being a DCE. But we do need your prayers. Because Satan doesn't like us. And the truth be told, there are some people who don't like us because they don't like the truth that we're called to tell about how God calls us to live. So sometimes our job can be hard because because sometimes we have to tell people things that they don't want to hear. And sometimes we get tired because there's so much work to do. And sometimes we get discouraged because we don't see the response that we think we ought to see. So we need you to pray for us. And I'll say this, if you've ever thought about being a pastor or a church worker or a missionary, now you're already a missionary. You ever thought about being a, a missionary in the sense of that's what you're going to give your whole life to? I'd love to talk to you. If you have questions about how this pastor thing works or how the missionary thing works or the church worker thing works, are there things that you don't know about it? Maybe you want to know about it. You are welcome to call, text, message, whatever. I'm happy to answer those questions. I'd love to visit with you. But for now, just know that your pastor or pastors, church workers and missionaries, we need your prayers. So let's pray. Lord of the church, we give you thanks and praise that you raise up pastors, church workers, and missionaries to share the gospel of Jesus with all nations of the world. Strengthen them in their callings. By the working of your spirit through your word, minister to them. Encourage and embolden them to preach, teach, and confess the saving gospel of Jesus. That you in Christ are redeeming, rescuing, and renewing the world. Further, Father, by the working of your spirit through your word, move your church to support your pastors, church workers, and missionaries who bring your saving word into their midst. Move your church to honor the office you have established so as to make your called workers' tasks joyful. And finally, we ask that you continue to raise up willing workers in your church, both those who will serve in professional church work and those who will volunteer in their local congregation, because, Father, the world needs Jesus. We need Jesus. We need to hear his promises. He is our hope and he is our salvation. We are bold to bring our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for being with me today and thanks for praying. We'll see you back tomorrow morning at 730.